Hey guys, how's it going? Preparing here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the things that I really liked and disliked about Path of Exile. Now, Path of Exile is a game uh, most of you have probably never heard of. Uh, it's a game that's very, very similar to Diablo 3, but in my opinion, it's actually closer to Diablo 2 in its complexity. Uh, it's an action RPG, just like the same. It, there's item progression, there's ladders. Uh, the scope of the game is that, you know, you, you drop off on, uh, on an island, you're exiled from wherever you came from, uh, and you get to play a character. You progress through the game, get some items, to level up, and it's, it's really fun. It's essentially a lot like Diablo 2, but it's got some crazy insane mechanics associated with the game. The game right now is in beta. It's a lot earlier in beta than, uh, let's say, Guild Wars 2, if you're comparing the game uh, in terms of uh, how polished it is. It's, you know, it's much further than a month away from being completely released. The game uh, basically is, uh, is made by a very small group in New Zealand. Uh, apparently this company only has like 18 people working for it, so it's a very like indie-like game. But it was very, very impressive to see uh, how polished and how, how interesting uh, this game is. Uh, now this game is going to be like a free-to-play when it's going to come out. Uh, right now it's in, uh, it's in the beta stage and you can acquire beta access for like a $10 contribution to the company. You can check that out on their website if you're interested in playing the game. And I think in the near future, I don't exactly know how near, uh, they plan on releasing the free open beta for everyone to play, which will then convert into the actual game when it will be finished. So, a few things I really didn't like about the game. Uh, number one, while it is a lot like Diablo 3, you know, in this game, you're, you're, not, you're not like a god just like pissing on all the mobs and just like, you know, you kill a zombie, it explodes all over the screen, you kill a barrel, you know, everything on the screen has splinters in it, man. I love that about Diablo 3, but this game is a lot more uh, humble. Like, you know, it has much more, um, it has graphics much much more tailored towards like the greediness, the greediness of the feel, uh, the, the, you know, the roughness of combat. You look, you can make your character look just like the opponents that you're killing. You know, there's very small difference between it. Whereas a game like Diablo 3, you know, you're, you're just like destroying everything you walk across. So it's, in my opinion, not as enjoyable uh, for the first few playthroughs. Uh, but I think um, they are going to work on that. And I have, uh, I have talked to the developer and he has let us know that they're planning on adding some optional... Uh, features for like blood splatter and all that other good stuff so maybe that will improve. Second thing that I didn't really like about the game is that combat is pretty slow. Um, it gets a lot better, it gets a lot smoother when you get good gear. When you get movement speed and attack speed the game feels very good but when you just start off the game it's um it's just not very exciting. Uh, I don't know. You just kind of swing slow and you run around slow. You know, maybe I've just played too many of these games, but uh, that's just my take on it. Uh, I think that is something they're going to improve, though, because I think many people share that opinion of the game. Next thing is that there's too much annoying inventory management. Let me let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to go to my stash. And um, I have like all these like little items here. You get these for like turning in items to vendors. You know, this takes up a large portion of your inventory. And the problem is that, you know, you gotta, you gotta put them all one by one in your stash here. It's so annoying. And, and some of them don't even stack properly. So see, look at that. Boom, have to click it to 40. Sometimes they just don't automatically stack. You gotta click on them one by one. Every time you sell items, you gotta like go back to your inventory and stack them properly. It's just kind of like pointless and annoying. I don't really know what it is, but uh, I think I think it's something that they're gonna work on. Like I said, this game is a lot uh, earlier in its beta stages compared to most games that I would review. Um, so yeah, I th I think there's a, I think there's a good chance that this stuff will get smoothed out. So maybe maybe it won't be as bad when you're playing the game. 
But uh, the last thing is the map overlay. So I'll, I'll give you guys a quick teaser here. Look at this. This is, this is the map overlay of the game. It, it's, 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 it's bad. It's just bad. Um, you have like the mini map over here in the right corner, which in my opinion is appropriate. But for those that want to play with the overlay, that want to like zoom in, it's, it's really not good. Um, there's a lot of places that you just make no sense. Like if you're looking at the, the, the overlay of the map, you'd have no idea that these are staircases. And when you're playing, when you're playing the actual game and you're trying to figure out where you have to go in like a labyrinth style map, uh, the overlay is going to be, uh, in many cases, very useless and in fact misleading. But again, it's a very easy fix, so hopefully it won't be a problem when you're playing the game. Now, there's so many things I liked about this game, I'm going to have to keep it concise, and I'll probably go into the specifics of things in other videos in the future. Now, the first thing that I really liked is the complexity of the game is mind-blowing. Alright, here's, here's what I'm talking about. So, I got all my items, I got sockets. The, the things you put in the sockets don't give you stats, they give you skills. So your active skills are the sockets in your gear and you can link them to other skills to combine. Like, and you have like new versions of skills with added effects with different costs. Holy cow. All right, other things, you got items. So items, they work similarly like you know Diablo 2, but you don't just kill mobs and find items. You can build items that you actually want. So you, know, you, can, you can go over here, you can purchase like a white two-handed sword you can turn it a normal item into a magical item. You know, you can you can do stuff like, you know, upgrade normal to a random quality. You can get a rare item. You can then add additional properties if if it doesn't have maximum properties. You can you can reforge the rares, you can reroll all the stats, you can add individual stats, you can reroll the sockets, the number of sockets, the color of sockets, the links between sockets. And holy cow, it's crazy. That's that's not even the best part. You guys ready for it? Check this out. All right. So you've probably seen that I have zero mana and, and I have like some cool stuff here. It's like, where, where does this come from? Well, let me show you guys the passive skill tree. So you get the gems from just like finding them in the game, but you get skill points for leveling up. Let's, let's have a look here. Here's, here's the tree here. Okay. So this is where you start off as a warrior. This is a marauder. I call it a warrior because it's a very basic tanky class. And you know you get you get adjacent bubbles that give you passives, and you're like, oh wow, there's there's a lot of them. And you essentially, you just you know you move through these. Each one is uh, unique, except for uh, you know certain like common links, like stat links. And there's a few common things like percent life, but there's many many unique ones. So it's like armor mastery. There's no other one that gives you 18 armor and two movement speed. So there's there's tons and tons of work. Here. But let's let me show you the best part. Here we go. So this is this is the warrior. Let's let's just see. Oh wow. Look at that. Look at that. This is the skill tree, guys. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Alright, so basically all the classes can can access the same skill tree, which is this one. You get a maximum of like 111 points or something like that if you're the max level, but you're never going to get there. So, you know, you get maybe 80, 90 points. And yeah, you can't go that far, but, you know, the warrior starts here. The, uh, I don't know what's called, the templar starts here. The witch starts here. You know, you can, you can go wherever, wherever you want with one class, but um, the only difference between the classes is the starting point on the skill tree. So, you know, if, if you like most of the passive skills in that area, that's the class that you'd play. And it's insane. You know, originally when I was looking at the skill tree, I'm like, holy cow, this is, this is the worst conceptualized idea I've ever heard. But they should keep it anyway, because people are going to remember the game for the game with the massive fucking skill tree. But after, like, really thinking about it, doing some research... It's pretty damn stellar. Uh, I think the idea is is really brilliant. It really is. Um, it it just works. Uh, it's 
very, very non-noob friendly, but once you get into the game, uh, it is absolutely crazy cool. Crazy cool. Alright, there's a few other things here that, uh, that I, I actually really, really like. It's the, um, the endless end game. So this game has like many different ladders. There's like the, they have like a two week ladder that's going on and uh, that's like hardcore only. And after the two weeks, your character gets converted to a hardcore character. So you're like, okay, well, whatever. Hardcore works the same way as it does in Diablo. You die once, you're dead. But you don't actually die. When you die in hardcore, you get converted to softcore. And there's many different ladders like these that are always resetting. So there's a certain level of competition. Right now, because there's not that many people playing the game, uh, the competition isn't as attractive to the masses. But it's kind of one of those things. When a lot of people get into the ladder, even more people are going to get into it because they're going to see the competitive uh, factor in it. And that's what makes it enjoyable, along with the, you know, the potential for the game to allow that kind of future, which does exist right now. And there's also the fact that, you know, you can get perfect items, but it's going to take you forever. Uh, it's going to take you literally like years to hit the max level. The max level in this game is 100. And I have been reassured by the developer that pretty much no one's ever going to get it. So, you know, there's a lot of the things that existed in Diablo 2 to make the game fun in, you know, in over time, over the years, that also exist in this game. And that is really a, an exciting feature. The next thing is that there's no auction house or gold. See, when, when you want to go to a vendor and sell something, like let me show you guys here. So I'm going to go here, sell items. I want to sell this ring. You know, I get like three alteration shards. I don't get gold. There is no gold. All you get is like these little things that's called like currencies and you use these to like modify items that you would later find in the game. There's no gold, you know? Uh, you might be surprised. It's like, wait a minute. Crip thinks it's a positive that the game doesn't have an auction house? All right, guys. World of Warcraft, love the auction house. Diablo 3, I don't want to see auction houses again. Like, it, auction houses work as long as the best items are not, you know, exclusively on the auction house. And with a game like this, where there's no soulbound items, um, I think it's absolutely perfect to not have an auction house and even to go that extra step to remove gold. So I think that is absolutely amazing. Now, the last thing that I really liked about this game is the, develop, the developers of this game have an obsession to make it right. You know, when I was streaming this game over this last beta weekend, um, the developers came on, mumbled, they talked to us, they answered questions that the people had, and, you know, I, I pitched my concerns, my suggestions, and they took everything positively. Everything that I got from our discussions was that they're really trying to make the best possible game out there uh, in the action RPG genre and they've been at it for several several years and I think I think they're getting it right uh, right now there's only like two acts they, they said they have a third ready um, but uh, they haven't released it yet and they're planning on four and they're planning on many other different things to improve the game in the coming months but uh, you know it's still a work in progress but everything that they were telling me uh, I was believing it because the, the, the base of this game, the, the conceptual uh, backing of this game is absolutely amazing. And I really hope they continue, they get this thing done, they get it done right, and I think we might have another amazing game on our hands. Hopefully you guys enjoy my review, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right, let's give this a try. I'm going to die here. Let's watch Kaparian die to the hardest boss in the game. Literally, he's pretty sure the hardest boss in the game. I'm not wrong about that, am I? Uh, the question, why Spectre Blood Magic seconds before fighting the hardest boss in Hardcore did come up. Because <laughs> I wanted it. Good luck, man. Good luck. Right. Burned. What do you mean? No, it, it's sensible. I hope it, I hope it goes okay. <laughs> Alright, see what he's got. Oh shit, that's kind of a lot of damage. Holy shit. Oh, 
gotta get that run speed. Don't you have to leap? Oh, okay. Holy shit! That's like the not coolest attack ever. Okay, let me just clean up these annoying little ads. Chris, what damage do these ads do? Alright, I need a new tactic here. I'm not getting close to that thing. Fuck that. Alright, we're gonna change up that one gem here. We're just gonna ground slam him down. Alright, that's the new tactic. Oh, you can laser over that shit. It's cheating. This uh, is all what's going on over there. Yeah, dude. I'm not getting meleeed by this asshole today. Or whatever the fuck that thing was. That pretty much one shot at me. Drop some lich turns on the floor and block this way. Good job at showing this, uh, this OP spell. It's gonna get nerfed. <laughs> He's gonna get nerfed? I hope oh, not. Oh, for sure. <laughs> How ridiculous that is! It's That's so like doing two necromancer bone wall, dude. I know. It is ridiculous. But you still may die here. Chris, comments, comments. I'm just staying quiet so it's not my fault when he dies. <laughs> it's done. Oh, I can't even pick up all the loot. One of my teammates says that I severely underestimate how good you are as a player, so congratulations. <laughs> you can still not die? No, you is this just severely underestimated how good he yeah, is as an exploiter. Uh, recurve bow. Mm. Oh, one-handed mace. Let's see how good this is. Oh, that was the wrong one. OP, carried by OP bone. Whoa! Bone. It's got a ridiculous one-handed mace. What is that? Like, I just got a ridiculous two-hander, and this mace is almost as good. Nice. Man. We make it drop good items just before the end of the events, so you're inclined to play later. <laughs> yeah. I, I suspected something like that. Right, this is probably the best bow ever, too. I have to ID it. This is like a ranger upgrade. No, it blows. No, that's okay. Oiled coat. Can I, can I exit Diablo style? With the item? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a bit of a problem though, because you can't get it back to your stash when you enter the game. Hmm. Let's see if I can get it back. Let's see Diablo style. Oh! No! Oh, man! Can I, like, move with... Oh, fuck. Alright, I need a solution here. What's the solution? You've got an item stuck on your fist. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Just prolong the decision. Alright, that bow is much worse. Fuck the bow. Okay. We actually have a we have a plan to fix this later. Boy <laughs> <laughs> <No>, screwed. <laughs> I'm keeping that mace. It's for my, my future hardcore adventures. I don't need mana flasks anymore. I'm kind of curious, like, how much better does my frost wall get? It's level 1. Does anyone have any idea? Do you know, Chris? 
What does Frostwall get when you level it up? Uh, I think it gets a little longer. I might be wrong. Um, what he gets longer Carl, and what happens to Frostwall as you level it up? Does it last longer? Or... It gets longer. It gets longer. Oh. I have to stop this. Probably need to make a lot shorter. Does it, does it like stay there longer? I might do. Oh, I can God check. Damn it. Sorry, ignore John in the background. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to actually take this to turn this realm off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't, that I don't wall... think we want to know what you guys are doing. That wall is gonna get nerfed soon. No, dude, it's it's, it's that, so pee. That wall is making me play. <laughs> They're not gonna nerf it ever. Oh, uh, cause you like the OP factor. <laughs> okay, you were, you went from so... like shit. I need a strategy to oh, I'm just gonna bone wall this shit. Yeah, bone wall and attack through it while they can't attack me. <laughs> It's strategy, that bro. That's proof for him. that it's OP. Mm, this, this is this is oh man. This is no <laughs> like pants, it. no pants bone waller. Number one, no pants bone waller US. Look at that, boning up all the mobs. There you go.